Hi, my name is Dr. Laura Erickson Schroth. I'm a psychiatrist, and I'm also the chief medical officer at the Jed Foundation. I'm here to talk to you today about opiate overdose. When people take opioids to get high, their bodies respond in a number of different ways. They feel relaxed, and that comes from the dopamine. They also feel sleepy or drowsy, and their heart rate and their breathing starts to slow. Breathing slowing is what leads to opioid overdose. Your breathing slows and eventually stops. When that happens, all the important parts of your body don't get enough oxygen to function, so they shut down. Your brain only needs to be without oxygen for three to five minutes before it starts to be damaged. Things that make an opioid overdose more likely, taking more than prescribed, taking an opioid prescribed for someone else, Mixing an opioid with another medication, like alcohol or a benzodiazepine, like Xanax, Clonopin, or Ativan, or taking a really powerful opioid like fentanyl, on purpose or accidentally. One of the biggest problems we have in our country is an opioid called fentanyl. It's about 50 times stronger than heroin, and even a tiny amount can cause an overdose. Most people don't go looking for fentanyl but they end up taking it because it's combined with other drugs. Fentanyl is a cheap way for dealers to make their pills stronger. It's not just opioids that are laced with fentanyl. It's also mixed with other drugs sometimes, like cocaine, amphetamines, and even MDMA, which is ecstasy or molly. There have even been cases of THC gummies being dusted with fentanyl. So even if someone thinks they're taking a drug that they already know, there's a chance it could be laced with fentanyl, and it only takes a tiny amount, smaller than the tip of a pencil, to cause an overdose. Symptoms of an opioid overdose include slow, shallow, or erratic breathing, choking sounds, or a rattle like snoring. If someone's taken an opioid and they seem like they're asleep and snoring, don't ignore it. They could be overdosing, and they might need help right away. Changes in skin color, because the skin's not getting enough oxygen. In someone with light skin, this can look blue or purple. And in someone with dark skin, this can look gray or ashen. Droopy muscles, slurred speech, coming in and out of consciousness or losing consciousness, not responding to someone who's trying to wake them up. An overdose can happen within minutes of taking an opioid. When someone's having an opioid overdose, it can be a scary experience, but there are straightforward steps to get through it. Call 911 right away. Most states have laws that protect you if you call for medical treatment when someone's overdosing. When you call, tell the dispatcher as much detail as possible. Are they conscious? Breathing? Is their skin a different color? Does their breathing sound odd or like they're snoring? If you have it, use naloxone. Naloxone is the generic name for the medication that many people know as Narcan. Here are some things you need to know about naloxone. It can't get you high and it doesn't lead to addiction. It's only used for opioid overdoses. Anyone over the age of 12 can carry naloxone without parental consent. You can get naloxone through your doctor and in some states you don't need a prescription and can get it from the pharmacy. There are often community trainings where you learn how to use naloxone and you get several doses for free. Naloxone won't work in any other kind of overdose, like benzodiazepines, cocaine, or amphetamines, but it also won't cause any harm. So if you think someone might have overdosed on an opioid, or fentanyl could have been laced into the medication they were taking, give them naloxone. Naloxone is often effective past its expiration date. So if you have naloxone, no matter what the expiration date, give it. You still need to get the person to immediate care because naloxone can wear off in 30 to 60 minutes and the person can go back into overdosing. While you wait for the ambulance, lie the person on their side, bend their knee, and turn their face toward the ground. This will help them breathe and prevent them from choking on their own vomit if they start to throw up. If you have naloxone, here's how to use it. Most people have the version of naloxone that's a nasal spray, like you'd use for a cold or allergies. Hold your thumb on the plunger and your first and middle fingers on either side of the nozzle. Don't test the spray, it's effective immediately. Hold the back of their neck, tilt their neck back, and put the nozzle as far into their nose as you can get it. Press the plunger firmly to give the full dose. You should use all of the contents in one spray and it doesn't matter which nostril you use. If they don't respond to the drug in two minutes, use the other dose that typically comes in a two-dose package. 
If the person is still not breathing and you have more naloxone, you can repeat this every 90 seconds until they start to breathe.